here is Shoshana Kitze, Just Call, co-founder of Ruchmat Nashim. What exactly does it do? What do we do? Um, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, we raise awareness about issues within the uh, community, the Jewish community in Israel, also the Jewish community, the global Jewish community, um, dealing with injustices where social policy has gone wrong, where it causes um, problems within the community that people are not aware of. So, for example, it's interesting we're talking about salary gaps, but for us, you know, in Israel, a woman can be the Supreme Court Justice or she can be the Prime Minister, but she can't be free of a marriage from someone who doesn't want to let her go. So, we have an incredible dichotomy where we're achieving so much, but at the same time, our rights are so far behind, and that's because we are both a Jewish and a democratic state, and we really have to work. And to make those things work better, because the people who truly suffer most of the time are women, converts, people who have uh, less of a say in how policy is made. And so we bring that to the attention and push for change. And uh, as, as far as uh, the, the religious community, the orthodox community, yeah. uh, obviously still uh, uh, perhaps um, uh, th there's still work to do for, for women because yes. uh, uh, they, these are very conservative communities not always going along with the, with, with the progress. Right. So it's, it's interesting um, because in Israel you have, and let's take the Haredi community for example, it's most of the people who are working, 75 to 80 percent are women who are working and bringing home uh, the salaries, bringing home, they're, they're the breadwinners, and yet they don't have a say in the policy that gets them there, and the policy that makes them the breadwinners. And so you have uh, two parties, actually, two Haredi parties, 13 MKs in total, and they both do not allow women. So how do you have representation when women aren't even allowed on? And the, the Haredi MKs, they don't go to the women's health days. They don't go to the, the um, violence and domestic violence committees. So there's no one representing these women. And now, in the past four to five years, women are really rising up and saying, you know, we do want to be religious. We want to have a, to have a religious life, but we also want to be heard. We very much need to be heard and to represent our children, ourselves, the things that are going on in our communities. There's no one representing their health and you know Haredi women die more of breast cancer even though they get it less but you're not allowed to talk about it. it it's just not something that is goes along with the idea of the women being important uh, in the community and so we need to we need to fix that. Preventing breast cancer is, is, is not widespread because it is, it is seen as indecent. How can we change that? This is it's, it's, it's huge it is so important. What can be done to change that? So I'm glad you asked that question. We actually have a campaign every year. Chochmat uh, Nashim works with Ruth Kolyan of Ubis Khutan. She actually created the first Haredi Women's Party to run for the elections in 2013. She did not get in, but she did create quite a storm. Um, and every year we put up, you know, Pashkavelim are the posters that you see in all the Haredi communities. And she creates it very modest. You know, you can save your life. And she uses Torah passages that describe the importance of saving your life. Please get checked, call me. And every year, 250 people call, men and women. And they ask, what is the mammogram? What are we supposed to do? And last year, when she tried to, we tried to do this in uh, B'nai Brak, they wouldn't let us put up the posters. And they said, it's not modest to talk to women like that in the streets. And we said, if it's not modest to talk about women's health, who is going to talk to women about their health? That's our job. That's the government's job. We cannot allow the people to hide behind the ideas of religion to say that we can't talk to women, that women's rights aren't important. It's not religious. It's cultural. And it's really important to understand this is not a religious fight. It's a cultural fight. And we're going to win this fight. Is the, the, the Orthodox community, which you see here in Israel, is very, very strict and, and conservative and, and perhaps leaves, leaves in the past are they willing to, to go through that change? Are they willing to go through that change? The problem is that... We're generalizing, of course, of but... Course. There's a fear, you know, there's a fear of people infiltrating their culture, of ruining their way of life. So what we really need to do is to say, this will not change your way of life. This will only enhance your way of life. Being healthy, allowing women to be part of the policy making, uh, uh, the decision making process only helps the entire community. Erasing women. And the unfortunate thing is what we're, we have a fight, not with the moderates, there are extremists who have taken over. And so they say, well, if you do this, you're not Haredi. If you do this, you're not Haredi. And you have a struggle between people who want to be Haredi and to keep their culture, but who want to be healthy, safe, work, not live in poverty. And the extremists who are saying, but if you do that stuff, you're one of them. We have to help people who want to do both, to be able to do both. And we need to make sure those extremists are not in power. How do you, how do, you do that? It, it's it's uh, on, on, on paper. What we're speaking now, it sounds doable. You go out to the street, I suppose it's a different story. Well, I live in Bet Shemesh. 
And in Beit Shemesh, we have, we have literally the, the, the most extreme of the extreme, and we have modesty signs, and we have people who graffiti, you can't Beit come Shemesh here. Beit Shemesh was very big in the headlines in the yeah. past few years. The city has gone, has been very, very much radicalized, part of it, not the entire city. Correct. The city of Beit Shemesh is an incredible city. I live there and I love it, but we do have extremists. And next to the extremists are people like me, like, uh, like native Israelis who say, we can be religious and be normal. This is okay. Um, and, we, and there is right now a big battle in Beit Shemesh. We're trying to get modesty signs down. We're trying to make people understand you can't erase women. Women are here to stay. Um, and to try to, it's not, I'm not going to say that it's an easy fight, but I will tell you this. Those who support the moderate, the moderate uh, religious uh, way of life need to speak against extremism. The only way we're going to to beat it is if we work together against it. That's that's really what I see. Very, very interesting. A lot of work still to be done, but yes. some progress has already been done. That's already encouraging. Shoshana Kitsch, Jasko, thank you very much for thank being with us today. Thank you very much.